Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar, and this is Transport Fever Strategy and Tactics, uh, Episode 5. So, in our last episode, I raged mightily against the iniquity of the road depot here, and it's sending the things here, and um, I sought out some solutions, tried them out on a, on a test save. They didn't work. Uh, but I'm not going to dwell on this. This is not going to be the entire series of me raging at this damn depot. Um, if it continues to annoy me, I will just deal with it quietly and move on with my life. Anyway, uh, now we are at a very precarious point in our development. Um, and this is more of a self-imposed uh, precariament, be mainly because we are still going for the Penny Pincher achievement, which requires that we do not ever touch this button. Uh -uh. We can eventually touch this button, but we can't touch that button. Nope, nope, nope. As much as I want to, as much as I want to borrow a cool two million and build us a nice, big, profitable railroad. Oh, that would be sweet right about now. No, we are doing it the, the low and slow method uh, by not borrowing into what we cannot afford. Um, so, that being said, that presents a whole new set of challenges to us, in addition to this being hard mode naturally, and in the 1850s, which is its technological hard mode. Fun! Um, so yeah, our, our fleet, as you saw from our little, uh, uh, thing here, is aging. It's starting to hit their, their, uh, uh, usable service lifetimes. Now, you might be saying, well, Pinstar, you better get replacing them. Mm, nah! Nah! Nope, nope, not going to do it yet. Don't worry. I know, I know, they will be replaced. Now, what is, uh, what, what is this service lifetime thing you speak of, uh, for those of you who might not uh, know this uh, uh, game as well? Basically, you know when everything ticks up its, mate, its, its upkeep costs here every, every, I think, month or so? Uh, like that. See how the numbers are a little bit different? That is because it is based on how old they are. The older they get, the higher that per tick cost is. Um, and once they reach a, uh, once they reach the end of their service life, then the increases in those costs per, uh, per tick, uh, become untenable and unaffordable and quickly unprofitable. That being said, you still have to shell out cash for replacement. This is where a lot of people get sunk. Uh, now here we are burning through a lot of this fuel here. I think we have too many, uh, carts on here. So we're going to, uh, uh, we're going to go, yeah, look at this, um, uh, let me see. Ficklewood, uh, fuel to Ficklewood. There we go. Um, yeah, we, we need to peel a few of these carts off of here. And what we want to do is we want to send them to our construction glass bolt line, because that is a line that is made of deliveries, but really, really needs, um, more carts on there and we're not really of the habit right now of uh wanting to buy new carts we want to actually send you know we want to rebalance and send some of our old carts over there now if we take a look at our uh, we want to take a t couple of things that you can see when um when it comes to actually yeah let me delete this line number one um there's a few things you want to keep in mind when uh, deciding, do I need to trim a few carts off of a particular thing? One is the frequency here. Now, presumably, we are we want these two coming at about the same frequency. But if we look at the profitability here, this one's much lower compared to this one. That generally means that this one is leaving with some empties, meaning that there are some that are making the back and forth trip uh, completely... Uh, uh, empty and therefore are uh, are causing us to get uh, lower profits from it. So if you can see, if you see two similarly purposed lines, but one is more profitable or at least less unprofitable than the other, it's a good sign that it might be time to peel some stuff off here. So we're going to peel another guy off of here. Now, also notice I'm clicking on these and making sure that the ones I click on do not have fuel. If one of these had fuel, I would not make it the one that we send over because then we'd lose the fuel. Um, we, want, we want those that are full of fuel to finish their deliveries and carry on with the line. 
Um, so if you're moving things from a non heartline um, uh, thing, then that's that's what you're going to do is make sure you move the empties. Um, I don't want to move too many away because then then the fuel will start building up here. So I think we'll be OK. Stone heart lines, plenty saturated. Uh, crude heart lines, more than plenty saturated. In fact, I think we might have one too many here. Now here, we're not going to be able to, uh, we're not going to be able to, to grab it at a uh, time when it is not full of something because it's a freaking heart line. Um, so we're just going to peel, uh, I'd say maybe two off of here. Um, and you'll see why in a little bit. Just trust me. Uh, and, and when possible, we want to pull off the crude, uh, Mainly because that's a lower, uh, lower cost, lower profit item. We uh, we don't want it to uh, pull off one of the uh, fuel delivery people. All right, so yeah, two from there that should be good, and we've got a couple more, and that now that now those will slowly make their way over here and become part of our uh, um, of our uh, construction delivery because we're starting to build up quite a few things here, and let's let's speed things up a bit. Um, I do want to naturally add on a few more construction uh, uh, things here, but I don't want to spend too much money. You'll see why in a little bit. Um, yeah, it's going to go to the glass bolt transfer first. So we just wait for it, turn around, buy another one, construction. Again, I'm not going to rage. I'm not going to dwell. I'm just going to deal with it and let it do its thing eh, let's do one more cart uh, horse wagon here again it's it's a longer term strategy here but we generally want to be pretty conservative at the moment um, mainly because and this is something that trips up a lot of players is um, and I've gotten a lot of comments I want to see what happens when you get this wave of, of things needing replacing um, you know how are you gonna survive I usually don't you know go past that uh, some of my commenters may say and well part of it is you gotta save up for it it is an event that you need to save up for now if you're not doing penny pincher you can just grab a loan or two and let your loans uh, soak up the replacement cost but no, we don't have that much of a luxury at this point. Um, so we want to uh, we want to sort of soak in and take in our profits. Luckily, our lines are doing just that. They are being plenty profitable. Um, now, one other thing, again, we're not going to be doing a lot of building, mainly because we're going to be doing saving and and, you know, very conservative, um, you know, building up our cash and then spending it on replacements soon. You'll see the reason why I'm not turning on replacements now and replacing our, our road vehicles that have already reached the end of their service lifespan. Uh, but for the moment, we, our focus is going to be on uh, balancing and optimization. Now, uh, construction of glass bolt, that's unprofitable at the moment, but it will get a bit better once we get more and more carts on it. Um, I think it's just because we recently added some cards and they're soaking up the uh, the expenses coming all the way up here. But soon they'll be they'll be going their back and forth route and being profitable and useful. Um, now let's see here. Yeah, we got to keep the inner cities are going to soak up uh, are going to be draining some of our stuff here. That's normal. Um, line two. Let's get some proper naming in here for line two. Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to keep a surprise as to what I'm going to be doing line two or all, ra really the ultimate purpose for line two. Uh, I'll show you in a little bit. Once 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 all of this balances out, you'll see a beautiful little pattern emerge um, and line two is going to be the heart of it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Stoneheart lines doing just peachy. Um, now let's take a look at some of our balances here. Remember in other episodes, I was talking about, uh, refineries getting cranky. 
uh, where they um, they they you know might withhold some of their goods uh, from their depots so that you can't deliver it because they're concerned about you not delivering enough of their stuff. Well, there's a couple of ways to tell if a refinery is getting cranky before this warning button starts flashing at you. There's a few other warning signs that you need to keep an eye out for. So while we were waiting for our funds to build up and uh, the, the allotted date to uh, arrive, let's take a look here. Now, look at this. We've got nine construction materials, now 10, now 11, now 12. Now, look at this. You're, now, you might be saying, well, hey, Pinstar, or, um, how's it producing? You know, I mean, they didn't deliver anything. Yeah, there's a little bit of stone left over in here. But, well, the way it's producing here is this. See all this stockpile right here? All this material built up here? It's not putting this stuff on here. This, 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 this depot right here could hold all of that, like right now, just boom, big giant forklift, put it on there. It's not though. And in, in fact, it's, it's, it's just slowly nibbling through its supply of stone. And yet its production limit uh, levels are nowhere near the limit. It's not like this thing is not high enough level to be able to handle the production demands of it. Why is it acting like this? because it's a little bit worried about my ability to deliver the construction materials. And I'm not talking about the construction materials here, because uh, we're pretty much dumping stuff off and picking more up, and, you know, 15 is not a lot of buildup for that. That's not what it's worried about. It's worried about over here. These things are a bit more aware than you might give them credit for. We're up to 114 built-up construction materials. We need to do a bit better on that. Uh, so I'm going to break my thing here and uh, send these guys down here. And I am going to have to manually reroute all of them, which just means I'm going to just manually set all of them rather than just let them loose and let them all do it. But no, 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 I'm not going to complain. Not going to complain. I'm above complaining. Well, not really, but... <laughs> All right, let me fast forward through this malarkey here, because I'm sure watching me slowly reroute some of my things here is not the most entertaining of things. But it is a necessary step, because we need to take a bite out of that, uh, out of those construction materials built up there, so that our, uh, const our uh, construction yard does not get worried and nervous. Okay, that's the last of those. We've got a bit of a pile up here, but that's okay. We we want to make forward progress on some of these, um, so that the uh, so that our our refinery um, can um, uh, well be a little bit more confident that we're going to be moving this stuff. Um, let's let's just take an eye at on how this is doing. Yeah, see the stone is building up. That means they're there. We are we're bringing them more stone than they think we can move in construction materials. That's a little worrisome. Um, now, there's another there's another aspect to their demand here. You see, all of this, all, all 100 of this does not necessarily is not necessarily bound for glass bolt. Um, and you'll notice something, an eagle-eyed uh, uh, observer may notice something. Look at this. There are construction materials building up here. Yet, this depot consumes them for glass bolt. And you might be saying, well, Pinstar, why on earth are construction materials being built up here? Shouldn't they just use them? Well, here's the reason. We are manufacturing way more construction materials than glass bolt could ever hope to digest. And whatever goes over that, well, you know, glass bolt just can't, can only use so much stuff. However, that doesn't mean that our setup is a bad one because of line two. 
Look at you, my friend. You are carrying... Well, there are only two at the time. You are ferrying the excess built-up construction materials that pile up at Glass Bolt all the way over here to Ficklewood. And, oh, what is this in Ficklewood? Some built-up fuel. Guess where this fuel is headed? Line two to Glass Bolt. So we are making more fuel than our two towns can utilize. And so the refinery is kicking some fuel our way and sending it via Ficklewood Central. So they go here, they refine the oil, they bring it back here. The fuel delivery picks up the fuel, brings it over here. Some of it gets used by Ficklewood, but some of it is excessive and builds up here, which will then be built here. Now, what do we have here? We've got construction materials building up here that want to go to Ficklewood and beyond. We've got fuel building up here that wants to go to Glassbolt and beyond. This is a heart line. Where once when one did not exist, we have a heart line. And that, my friends, is awesome. Fuel... Construction Heartline. Forgot the uh, naming restrictions. And now, yeah, we only have one vehicle on there because we it would take a while for us to saturate these two and build up goods here. Now it is time uh, for us to start actually telling it to, actually throwing a few horse wagons on board here. Um... And yes, I know, more replacements. Actually, you know what? We're going to hold... Well, no, I want to... Mm, yeah, no. No. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait. I'm going to wait. You'll see why I'm going to wait. But trust me, we're going to be feeding some stuff to that line. In fact, you know what? Why don't we look for an opportunity to feed some stuff? See, see here? Our construction to glass bolt became profitable. Let's keep an eye out for... Um, uh, depots that might be a bit overloaded. And ooh, what do we have here? Fuel, oh, Pelican Town. The uh, Pelican Town Express here is still, yeah, overly saturated, despite the odd difference in profitability. But yeah, let's peel a Pelican Town off. And we're going to send you to the um, uh, FuelCon uh, Heartline here. Uh, yeah, why, why not? One more FuelCon Heartline. And you know what? We'll peel off uh, one from Ficklewood here. No, I've been peeling them off from Pelican Town. Ficklewood needs them because ultimately Ficklewood's going to be handling a little bit extra load. Although, what's the ones that are built up here? Uh, Fuel to Ficklewood. All right, good. So, yeah, Fic I'm not going to peel off anything from Fuel to Ficklewood despite it be showing a lower uh, profitability here. Uh, so now these guys are going to be hopping on our little heart line here. Uh, it's not going to be super saturated at the moment, but again, we are, we're dealing with other things right now. Also, one of my, uh, one of my um, uh, uh, commenters did make a very handy suggestion that if you have more than 500,000 um, cash on hand uh, in December, you can pay back your loans, and since the loan interest is paid from uh, from December to January, you pay less loan interest, and then you can just retake the loan. And normally I'd say, heck yeah, because we certainly have more than 500. We might even have more than a million, although I doubt it by, by then. Nope, we're not, but that's okay. Uh, but, however, in order to retake the loan, I think that would break our penny pincher achievement. But, Today, now is the moment of truth. New vehicles are available. That thing and the horse cart. Let's take a look at our new toys, shall we? Shall we? I think we shall. See, the reason why I wasn't replacing our original horse, uh things is, is that only a couple years after the first wave of them started becoming too old, a new upgraded replacement model comes onto the market, and this is better in almost every way. So, 
horse wagon is what we were originally using. Horse cart is the new thing. How that is super awesome, high-tech stuff, I have absolutely no idea. But the main differences here is uh, top speed of 20 kilometers per hour versus 15 here. Um, it, uh, it does have more running costs, 3.62K a year versus 2.29, but it has a five-year longer lifespan. And most importantly, it can hold five goods instead of four. Now, that might not sound like very much. That might not sound terribly important, but oh, man, is it important. Five goods going five kilometers per hour faster on average, that will increase your throughput. You multiply that by however many things we have, and it becomes huge. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to want to upgrade everything into horse carts. And this thing is basically what the horse cart does to the horse wagon. This thing does to the stagecoach. It's faster. Um, it lasts longer. It has five instead of four. It's just better all around. So we are going to push that into service. And we've got 855K in our pockets for upgrading. Now, the easiest way to upgrade things is to use the auto upgrader tool, which is done here. What you do is you click on here. You need to set, tell it what vehicle to upgrade to. In this case, we want to upgrade to the horse cart. So even if the thing, the old thing that's being replaced was not a horse cart, it will sell the old thing and then uh, uh, buy a horse cart to replace it. Now, these things cost 21.7K per, uh, minus the cost of the old vehicle, but the old vehicles at this point aren't worth terribly much. So replacing them is going to cost us money. Uh, but this is going to be money well spent. Um, and for a little while, this is going to be what we're going to be doing. We're, we're going to be sitting here. We're going to be soaking up costs and expenses. We're not going to have the money to be able to build new things or assign new carts, which is kind of why I was assigning things out. Um, but this is a necessary step. And once we uh, emerge from our mass replacement phase, we'll be smelling like roses. Uh, although I can't imagine that with horse carts because that they're, they're still horses. Um, so anyway, to spare you the tedium of me going in here and replacing everything, or at least setting up auto replace, uh, I will go ahead and fast forward. Yeah. Um, and again, make sure you for your passenger lines, make sure you you set it to the, the to that O thing, and then for your uh, physical goods, you need the horse cart. All right, guys, I'll see you on the flip side. Okay, we are done, and uh, yeah, so all of them, all of our lines are set to replace it. Now, when when items are replaced is when they come in for a stop. The system will take a look at them, see if they are are beyond their service age. In this case, fifteen years. And when they're when they unload their goods, they will sell them automatically buy a new one and then have the new one be ready to go and load up the new goods at uh, where applicable. Uh, so they don't, so they are not going to drop their cargo. Uh, this used to be a problem way back in the day where you had to go and manually replace them or suddenly all these things being replaced would be replaced like in the middle of the road and their cargo would vanish and you'd lose a whole butt ton of money. Here, no vanishing of cargo. It, it waits till it completes its route and then it, uh, then it replaces them. But as you can see, we are burning, burning through our money here. As every one of our vehicles that is uh, outdated arrives in their various stations, they are getting replaced and at a loss every single time. But that's okay. That's okay because that means they're going to start making us more money. A lot more money. Um... And eventually we're going to get down to zero here because we're not going to have the cash to replace everything at once. A good way to take a look at your vehicle count here is to open up this vehicle tab here and sort by age. Everything that is beyond the service life at the moment is in red. Um, so you can see that, you know, even now that we've replaced things down to the uh, to the dregs here, we still have a ways to go in terms of being able to replace our entire fleet properly. But that's okay, 
because as these things uh, come online, as these things are upgraded and then put right back into service, um, they are going to be making us more money. They have higher capacity and they're going to be getting there faster. Um, so ultimately, our income is going to, in the long run, rise. Um, so, you know, all of these expenses just basically hammering us, keeping us, you know, dancing back and forth from the negatives. This doesn't mean our, our business is, is starting to drown. Far from it. This is just a phase. Um, so... I wouldn't worry about it. Now, the one thing the game does do is it is um, if something pulls into a station and we don't have the money for the upgrade, it won't do the upgrade. It won't send us de deep, deep, deep into debt, and it certainly won't make us take out a loan. Um, it's just going to wait till it has the cash for the upgrade, um, and then whoever whoever's the next lucky tram to come in that's outdated will get replaced. So it'll it'll take care of itself automatically, um, and if a bit sporadically. I mean, there'll there'll be some cases where some of the 15 year olds will get replaced before the 20 year old here, um, but that's just luck of the draw. And once our money catches back up, things will be replaced a lot more regularly and a lot more reliably. Um, right then. So again, we're we're just monitoring for balance here. Um, we've got this place. This place is at 108, so it's a little bit lower than it was before, which ain't so bad. Um, and let's see, how are we doing here? Yeah, see, we're building up, we're building up stuff for our Heartline, but it's not building up horrifically. So while we only have a small number, oh, by the way, here, see, this is one of the upgraded ones. See, it just brought fuel to this town and it picked up construction materials. Um, and so they're making about 8K both ways. Uh, and that's just so that everyone can share. See, Glassbolt has a little bit of supply of fuel. Not, not quite as much as, as, it, as it has the uh, um, <laughs> construction materials. But notice how much higher the industrial jobs are here than the, uh, the others. Now you might be saying, well, Pinstar, um, are you going to hook them up with, uh, with the passenger service? And my answer is yes. Yes, of course we are. Uh, but we got to get through this replacement phase before we, we invest in more architecture and more lines and more infrastructure and what have you. See how our income is now starting to balloon back up? Now, uh, of course, it gets knocked back down, but now we're replacing things more regularly when they stop into the station. Now, also, unfortunately, we do have a whole, whole host of things that are coming into the uh, uh, outdated uh, uh, distinction because I mean if you remember in our earlier years we we were buying and building vehicles at a pretty regular f frequency so we pretty much have vehicles that are going to be coming due every single year but um, these um, this mass replacement thing and the fact that they're all going to be replaced with some pretty uh, pretty more e efficient um, uh, vehicles here means that they're going to be making us more money in the long run. Not to mention all of the inflated um, maintenance costs that are caused by things being over their age. As we replace them, um, those will start going away and replaced with. Um, now, granted, the the maintenance costs on the on the better vehicle is higher, so it's actually kind of a wash in terms of maintenance costs. But at the very least, the higher price you're paying for maintenance on the better vehicle, you're getting more for more bang for your buck. You know, you're not overpaying for for a broken old nag and and, uh, and a zombie horse here. Um, you know, somehow pulling the cart past their lifespan. Uh, talk about beating a dead horse there. Um, all right. So yeah, soon, soon. Let's just check out our crankiness levels. Yeah, still pretty cranky here, but once we get everything upgraded, especially once, um, the, the, um, the construction uh, delivery gets upgraded, um, That they're going to be a lot less cranky. Trust me. Um, and you guys are starting to build up more fuel, which is good, because that also means uh, fewer empties on the fuel delivery. And yeah, look at this pile up here. We can't really reliably add more volume, uh, which is another reason why the... Uh, 
the, the, the upgraded carts are so important because they take the same amount of time to process at these stations here, but they have more goods. So they are delivering more goods. They are picking up more goods. They are, they are getting more, more volume in and out of this depot. Um, and yet they still take the same amount of time to process. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's all in all a good thing. Um, and this not will, these things naturally work themselves out. Um, cause I don't have anything set to wait for full load. This is just waiting to fill up the whole cart here and hopefully you're, yeah, you're not waiting in line there. So you're going to go, uh, you're going to go sneak around and pick up fuel there. Um, so yeah, this doesn't worry me too much here. These guys will work themselves out and it'll eventually just space out the line. There's a little bit of compression here because now we're starting to mix in, um, highly, uh, highly upgraded, uh, things with some of them that have not yet had a chance to get replaced. Uh, so we have a little bit of a, a little bit of a speed bottleneck because if one of these things gets stuck behind, um, one of the unupgraded carts, it's going to go slower. Um, but once the entire line is upgraded, then everyone's going to be going at 20 and no one's going to be stuck behind anyone. And since these roads can go up to, uh, go up to 40 mi uh, miles per hour, kilometers per hour, I should say, um, no one's going to be limited by the actual speed limit. How, uh, how, how are we doing over here? Yeah, fuel, yeah, th this one is, um, yeah, keep high production to upgrade in seven months. Yeah, this place ain't cranky. Cranky places don't upgrade. You guys are, you guys are still cranky. We still got to demonstrate to them that we're, uh, we, we are committed to uh, um, keeping their, getting their goods uh, delivered here. Uh, how are we doing on our upgrades? See, look, we're almost out of the red here. Only a few more guys need to upgrade themselves. Now, granted, we're going to have a big wave of guys that will start to need to upgrade next year, but that's okay. As long as we get the, the overdue ones uh, upgraded here, that's, that's, that's our point here because then we're really helping out our, our cause. Um, and, yeah, getting this thing upgraded. I think you might be one of the ones uh, about to – no, you're not the – Whoever's next stop here is probably going to be Mr. Actually, why don't we just click on it? Where are you, my friend? You might still be far away. Whee! Yeah, we're still pretty far away. Oh, God, I'm stuck in the horse. Let me go. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, you're you're t you're on the construction materials phase. So once you stop up here, you'll have a chance to upgrade if we have the cash in the bank. Okay, folks, uh, I'm going to let this fast forward a little bit more uh, so that we can finish off the last of our reds here and maybe start to consider uh, uh, building up a, a few more uh, carts here. We're basically done upgrading here. We've got one uh, one passenger vehicle here, but we'll have enough cash for it. Uh, we do want to get a few more, and at this point, we're going to be buying these new because the, we don't. Want, there's no reason to buy horse wagons at this point. Literally, no reason. Um, and sending you on here, and of course, we will make sure. <laughs> Unfortunately, these horses are faster, but they ain't any smarter. But by increasing our delivery throughput here, uh, we will signal our uh, our friends at the uh, um, at the construction plant that we're 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 going to make good on these deliveries. Don't you worry, buddy. Don't you worry. We're we we got you covered. We got you covered. Once we point these horses in the right direction, we got you covered. And yeah, we are we are still going to be sipping at here, 
But yeah, if you look at our if you look at our numbers here, look, uh, new vehicles, 1.12 million in 1870. That was the year when all this came out. And we've been bl burning through pretty much everything we've been making uh, per year on new vehicles. But once all, all once all the heavy duty new vehicle replacing stops, then all of that extra is just going to be pure profit. So yeah, we lost a whole butt ton of money in this particular episode, but that's okay because now we have an improved fleet and a young fleet too. Um, all these uh, old fogies uh, have been replaced here properly. Um, this one's doing a little bit better. You're doing a little bit. Yeah, 134 production. So it's, it is willing to, to entertain a larger production line here. So it's actually going to start chewing through the stone that's built up here a little bit faster um, and actually dump out some of its inventory here. So we're going to see a lot of build up here, which is actually good because, you know, it's, it's making that available for us. So we have no risk of empties. And that's because we added that extra production capacity on our line. Now look here. Let's take a look at here before we end the episode. So we're at 148. Oh, let's say, yeah, 150-ish. It's uh, and yeah, once once you hit that uh, mark, it's gonna it's we gotta keep the production up. So you know what? Let's do something to keep that production up. Let's to to maximize it. Uh, let's get another horse cart here uh, to our construction zone because it's it, it is recognizing how much carrying capacity and delivery capacity we've just added to the line so by us buying a horse cart here it it it, it recognizes that this is we just suddenly added a lot more capacity here uh, than we would otherwise see which is awesome um, because now it's going to start spitting out even more goods See, look, if they have almost churned through all of their stone, 168, it's going up faster and faster. Um, all right, 166, 168, we were previously at 150-ish, um, so we made it jump up a bit more in terms of its production level. Why? Let's see if we, uh, if we can get it higher. Let's add one more line to this, because I want to test a few theories. Horse cart set you to the construction delivery line. 170 I saw it tick up to. Hmm. All right, so it's not really making it budge here. So let me let me explore my uh, my other theory here. I mean, I certainly don't begrudge putting that one thing on the line, but what if it's the extended deliveries that they're looking at? What if we buy, say, a couple of horse carts here um, and set them on the um, fuel construction heart line? Now, I'm not going to be super picky at which stop they start at first. Um, I don't know which one they're going to go to first, but they're going to go back and forth anyway. 154... Come now. 150. Come on, come on, come on. S stay high enough to upgrade. All right, that might have pushed them back up. Maybe stuff is building up uh, at the... Holy crap, yes, yeah, stuff is building up at the station here. That's why it's starting to decline. Because they're just dumping out everything they have. See, they've burned through all, pretty much all of their stone. Uh, they still have some built-up material here, but it's thinning out. See? It's not all compacted because uh, they're just dumping it out here. As we add more and more stuff here, they are willing to dump more and more stuff there um, because they can see the routes that they're, you know, that they're going to see that this stuff is eventually going to get delivered to where it's supposed to go. Um, let's start with a few other things, and we'll just make it here three to our heart line. And now let's see what kind of uh, level of, uh, of output in it that this thing goes here. 96. Yeah, the production, yeah, they, they canceled the upgrade, but that's fine. 
That's fine, because it's already churned through all the stone it can handle. I don't know if we can deliver stone fast enough to here to make it upgrade to 400 yet. But um, it is certainly emptying out its uh, its built-up inventory here into here um, in a manner that would uh, basically indicate that they have a lot more faith in us. So this is what a happy refiner looks like. Uh, we're taking it away as fast as we can. They're giving out here, and because because we see these the the carts on on this line are not quite old enough to need to upgrade yet, so they're on the old version. But the carts that are that are taking away the stuff uh, the that are delivering the uh, construction materials are uh, generally newer. So we're getting the end product faster than here, which is why we're burning through some of their built-up inventory. Uh, let's take a look at our other refiner and see if they are happy. Now, you are going to see some build up here uh, in the form of their other product, the refined oil. But see how they are just burning through oil the literal second they get the crude. They're like, churn, 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 process, 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 delivered. No, um, they're they're happy. They're happy. They're giving us every ounce of what they can make. There's no built-up material here waiting, you know, wishy-washily wondering, hmm, is he going to be able to deliver this or no? None of that. None of that. They are fully confident in us. So this is one happy, happy refiner. And this episode has gone on just a touch too long. So I think I'm going to cut it here. So in our next episode, we contemplate additional expansions and reap some of the rewards of our uh, replacement strategy. So if you like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment, good, bad, or indifferent. Your feedback is always welcome. So until next time, this has been Pinstar signing out. See ya.